talk about the mean value theorem? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. So this is one of those existence theorems, which just talks about things that have to exist. Uh, so let's just read it, and we'll go from there. If a function f is continuous on interval a, b, that closed interval, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, then there must be a value, meaning an x value, c, that's between a and b, such that the derivative at that point has to equal the slope. So let's draw a picture. I think a picture says it all. Oh, if yeah. I that's, have that, a, that'll do it for me, yeah. <laughs> and I have b, and who knows what this function does, okay? I could find the average rate of change or the slope of that secant line, right? This would be the point b, f of b. This would be the point a, f of a. So the slope of that line would just be, can you, are you seeing me over here? I gotcha. The change in the y's over the change in the x's. That's just the slope, the average rate of change, right? Or, boom. So this mean value theorem says, okay, there's got to be at least one point where, let's see if I can kind of eyeball it, there's got to be one c value in between a and b where the slope at that point, in other words, the derivative, is exactly equal to the slope of that secant line. Hmm. It makes sense. Let's it say I'm driving sense. from New Paltz to Kingston, okay? And let's say my average rate is 40 miles an hour. Now I might be going zero miles an hour for a while. I might be going 20 miles an hour. I might be going 60, 65 if I get on the throughway, right? But I have to, at least once, go 40 miles an hour. If that's my average rate for the whole sure. trip, yeah. there has to be at least one time when I'm going 40 miles an hour, right? That's what this is saying. That's the mean value theorem. That's good. Isn't that cool? I like it. So let's do a couple problems. Let's try one of these mean value theorem problems, shall we? Okay, so I want to find the C value or values that are guaranteed by the mean value theorem given that my function is this on the interval 2, 5. So you know what we need to do first? We need to make sure that the, the requirements of the mean value theorem are first satisfied. In other words, the function has to be continuous on the interval and it has to be differentiable. So particularly if I'm looking at a square root here, we want to make sure that we're okay. So 2 to 5, let me draw a picture here. This guy is going to start at 1, am I correct with that? And then be kind of, you know. So 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, I'm thinking I'm okay on that interval, right? Looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah there aren't any problems. Obviously, if this were a 0 or something, <laughs> then... I couldn't even use the mean value theorem because zero wouldn't even be part of the domain. Okay, so here I go. So I am looking for the place on this curve from two until five. I can even erase this bit right here. Where the slope is going to be equal to the slope of the line that joins those endpoints. Right? All right, well, let's, let's find that average rate of change. Let's find the slope between 2 and 5. So I'm basically just going to find f of 5 minus f of 2 over 5 minus 2. So far, so good? All right, so let's see. 5, f of 5 is the square root of 5 minus 1. That's the square root of 4. Ooh, that's going to work out nicely. Yeah. I must have planned this or something. Okay. What are the chances? F of 2 is the square root of 2 minus 1. 1 over 3. Okay, so that's a 2 minus 1 is 1 third. So my slope of my secant line is 1 third. So far, so good? Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, over here. Are you, do you still have me? I got you. I'm going to take the derivative of this puppy. 
Well, this is x minus 1 to the 1 half, so let's do 1 half times x minus 1 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is just a 1. Okay, so the mean value theorem says there has to be a c value in x where this equals this. Okay, I'm, I'm coming over here. Is that going to work? Yeah. So, 1 half times, and I'm going to put a c in just for fun. That must equal 1 third. Oh, so now I'm just going to solve for c. You know, I don't like those negative exponents. I'm going to bring it on down. And if I want, I can even write it like that, right? Okay, I can solve this any number of ways. It is a proportion, so we can cross multiply if you like, or just do some reciprocals. I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to square both sides. And my answer is 1 plus 9 fourths. That's, is this correct? Did I do that right? Yeah. So 4 fourths plus 9 fourths is 13 fourths. I am suddenly having difficulty writing here. 13 fourths, which is 2 and a fourth. 3 and a fourth. So right around there. Of course, my graph is not very no, accurate. But that seems pretty that good. That actually yeah, seems, no, yeah. I, I like At 3.25, this derivative is going to be exactly equal to that average slope. That makes sense. Absolutely. Fun. All right. Thanks, Mr. Stewart. Thank you.